Another beautiful day it is uh, for us uh, to talk about something very important uh, in Nigeria, and it's something that is almost going into extinction, and it has to do with, uh, well, grassroots governance. Welcome to the discourse here on Classic FM. My name is Lyman Ayledad, of course. Uh, uh, my guest today uh, should be able to help us in on this. Uh, apart from being a politician, he's someone uh, who's... Uh, become uh, what a lot of people have called a true nationalist going by uh, what he's been able to say in matters of national importance uh, irrespective of his political you know leaning uh, i'm now being joined by fuad oki who is a a, a a chieftain of the all progressives congress good to have you join us uh, fuad oki good afternoon how are you I'm good. Thanks for making this easy for us. Thank you for giving us your time to be on the on the show today. Thanks for having me as usual. Thanks again, my brother. Well, the thing here is that, you know, we've always heard this word, uh, politics is local. Uh, and every time they say politics is local, uh, we, we start asking the same question of us here in Nigeria, if truly uh, politicking or politics is local in Nigeria. And just recently, we saw some uh, assembly members, national assembly members, voting against, uh, you know, autonomy of uh, local government administration. Uh, but very quickly, because even though we're talking about uh, grassroots governance, I still cannot uh, let you go before, uh, without asking you some of the things happening in Nigeria in terms of security, in terms of, you know, 2023, 20, which, uh, you know, love it or hate it, we have seen some kind of incursion being made by politicians, uh, you know, subtly, uh, you know, towards 2023. But again, welcome to the show. Quickly, let's let, let's start by looking at Lagos, which is your base. And, um, you know, it's one thing uh, in Nigeria that a lot of states, they look towards Lagos uh, to the extent that uh, they can always point to Lagos as an example. So if Lagos is doing something right, uh, some will say, Go, go look at Lagos. It's not done that way in Lagos. So so it is, if Lagos is also doing it wrongly, some will also point at Lagos and say, I, I saw that in Lagos. So what are you telling me? If it can happen in Lagos, then it can happen here. So uh, let's talk about grassroots governance. I, I, I live in a community here in, in Lagos, whereby uh, I should know my councillor. I should know my local government chairman. Uh, I should know people who administer uh, you know, administration uh, within that locality. So when we talk about grassroots governance, uh, as a politician, how would you define grassroots governance? Thank you very much, Lyman. We must start by first situating these things. And I'll start with, you know, your preamble about Lagos vis-a-vis -vis Nigerian political development. So we therefore must go back, particularly to look at the period 1861 and 1954. You look at the period when the British was invited to the colony of Lagos by King Dusmu. You want to interrogate what led to that and then look at it up to 1914. At the point of amalgamation, a lot of us do not seem to understand this or don't even know that Nigeria, which was amalgamated then, was basically the Southern Protectorate, the Northern Protectorate, and the colony of Lagos. The colony of Lagos being the capital, administrative and political of Nigeria then, as well as the administrative capital for the Southern Protectorate. What that is telling us essentially is that political development of what later become Nigeria started from Lagos agitation, you know, what have you. I recall in 1909, when the British government, the colonial government built Iju Water Works and reticulated it all the way to the colony and the colonists were charged to pay water rates. It was my great grandfather who stood up to say, listen, we are not going to pay it, that we will not pay taxes 
if we are not involved in how governance will be. The letter Bibuki, the first crown prince merchant, led some other allies and wealthy Lagosians to stand up against that government. The matter ended up at the suspension of the Den of Lagos, Eleko Shubai. And the matter was settled at the Privy Council. A lot of Nigerians don't know the role played by these four bearers. Rather, it was the only literate, educated person in their midst, the great agent Buru Abad Macaulay, who, as a matter of fact, was not a member. Rather, he was not even the secretary. He was the interpreter to the then ILU committee, which was the precursor for political development in Nigeria. And it was from there, you know, in 1919 and in 1927, when the first board of survey started, which we call local government today. You need to look at that to understand why Lagos is the, the barometer to use to measure political tempo of Nigeria. And not just the political tempo, but also the social and economic direction of the country. It means that Nigeria will not go anywhere if all of us, all of us, irrespective, don't come together and make Lagos work again. Having said that, we're not talking about politics being local. We also need to understand very clearly that what is called politics, it's about community engagement. And that is why it is local. It should be within your community. As they call it CDA or call it whatever, whatever, community-based activity. It's what, you know, politics is about. So it has to be at that level, at the grassroots level. Unfortunately, in this part of the world, that is the level in which we refuse to participate. And hence, we have an all comma system of government where, as opposed to getting people who have pedigree, who have antecedents, who have contributed, you know, one way or another into their immediate community. The last 21 years, unfortunately, we've been giving governance, which in itself was a franchise, it's a social contract. And we've been giving that to job seekers, to people who are loafers, lay about, are supposed to, you know, giving our franchise because they are supposed to keep it in trust for us. But all of us are guilty. We are guilty because again, oh, politics is dirty. I don't want to get near it. Oh, I'm too big for politics. Forgetting that when you allow imbeciles to take over governance, they will make laws, bad laws, it's, for it's, good it's, people to it's, obey. It's politics truly dirty. It's not. You see, you must understand something. You have good people, you have bad people. There are good people in the profession, there are bad people. So it's about the individual. It's not the system, the individual operates the system. So politics will be dirty when you allow imbeciles to take over. When imbeciles take over, they will create imbecilic laws and regulation for good people to obey. And that's the crux. And that's what we should be talking about. Suleiman, you recall years ago, I told you, you must come into the fray. You recall, and I'm still going to hold you responsible. I don't know. Uh, you did that. Abigail Dabiri has done that. A lot of people. But again, for now, I think I'm okay here. And if I do leave, well, who will be asking the question? Listen, am I not okay with what I do? Am I not a professional? Certainly you are. 
uh, so, so what stops you? I'm, 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 we'll have, I'm talking we'll have that, to uh, I'm, we'll have Suleiman, that Suleiman, I'm talking to thousands and thousands and thousands of Suleiman who are Nigerians who truly want this country Absolutely. to fulfill its potentials. You must all please come out. We've been challenged by the NSAS generation. They've done fantastically well. They showed resilience. They showed capacity. They showed organization. And you know what else they showed? Empathy. I'm challenging them. Come back. We will be there. We'll stand by you. Let us rise up to say enough is enough in getting imbeciles to take over our lives. Let me bring in something that, uh, well, you wrote. Uh, it's a 17 page document. <laughs> you know, off the top of my head, I said, I said, I said how did this Baba, you know, you know, you sat down and you were writing because I read everything page by page. It was yeah. titled, titled um, Lagos State Local Government Election Before the Cock Crows need to be truthful, fair, equitable, and transparent with Lagosians. You know, what were you thinking? Because the mindset, for those who don't have, uh, you know, uh, this document, 17-page document, that's a lot. You, you need to love reading for you to go through all of this. You need to love history, uh, governance, and even, you know, local government administration and Lagos for you to go through all of this, which I also did. Uh, I'm thankful I did that. But again, what pushed you to put in, uh, you know, pen to paper, uh, putting this down? Thank you very much, my man. Again, we at we we are all at a precipice. It's either we do it right and get it right, or we are all doomed. We are all doomed. Some people will say, "Oh, but you used to be part of it." Yes, maybe I am repentant, maybe. But I I I sat down to to look at Nigerian political development, social economic development, and I'm getting to a cul-de-sac. And that is what pushed me. Again, against the background that Lagos is dead politically, Lagos is dead socially, we don't have social life anymore. Did, did, Economically, did, did, did you say Lagos? The Lagos we are now is dead politically. Yes, that's the truth. That's the truth. That's why we have a government that is totally overwhelmed. You know why? We are all not playing our roles. We are not playing our parts. Why do we? I do I say that we elect people to government and leave them? You see, to their fates, not contributing to government either by way of research or contribution, by way of policy, you know, uh, enunciation. We don't do it. But again, how, no. can the, how can the people do that? Sorry to cut you there because I'm yes. just trying to ask the questions uh, that yes. uh, ordinary Lagosian and Nigerian will be asking. How can yes. they do that when, uh, if you look at it, in almost all 36 states of the Federation, those in the yes. National Assembly that are supposed to check, you know, the executive arm are still people handpicked uh, by the same people who are in, uh, in authority. So who does all of those uh, checks? Who, who, who allowed that to happen in the first instance? Let me tell you quickly. If people get the type of government they deserve, because that is what they desire. How do they desire that? By their refusal to participate. It's a social contract. You must understand it. You want good government, you must participate. Times pass when I go out to do political advocacy. You know what I tell people? I want to beg you to go out there and vote, rain or sun. Oh, but I don't like those that are on the ballot. I said, that's why you should participate. Void your ballots because it will be counted. And the law is very clear. 
certain percentage of voided ballots will also void that election. You don't get it, Suleiman. Go out there. You don't. You, you are not sure of those representing the various political parties on the ballots. Void your ballots, but ensure that you vote. Void it. The voided ballots are counted. And there is a threshold. The moment voided ballots get to that threshold, that election will not hold. So you now go back. And we, you see, we must start somewhere, anywhere at all, but we must start. We must start to, to query the political parties. We must fight political parties to ensure that internal democracy is upheld. You know why we have problems of insecurity today in this country? Because we are all not truthful. Nigeria is a country, it's a land that is filled with honey and milk. And how you get that in ensuring that opportunities avail everybody. You know why Lagos is a port pouring? Lagos is the only city I have seen, and I've been to quite a number of countries. Lagos is the only city where there is no welcome. Nobody welcomes you to Lagos. You know what they say? This is Lagos, a Kony. And you know the meaning of that? That this is the land of opportunity. Lagos awaits you with opportunity. When you get to Lagos, it avails you those opportunities. That's why you come to Lagos with nothing. You go back to the village with something. Today in Nigeria, that opportunity is not there. It's not dwindling. It's not just them. If there's no opportunity in Lagos to drive them, there's no opportunity in Nigeria. Today, on the streets, broad daylight, you will see petty robbery, stalling, mugging. You know why? Because you've closed the opportunity to that guy that has come to Lagos in pursuit of a greener pasture. That opportunity is not there. When that is not there, then you avail them with their innate capacity to look for what to eat at all times. So they resort to crime. We must look for that again. Ensure that we have that. So you must come out there. And I'm also challenging thousands of Sulaiman out there. Together, let us change the narratives and begin to create a new trajectory that will create a land filled with opportunities, social justice, equity, and respect for the rule of law. You know, certainly, it's certainly something that uh, every Nigerian uh, should uh, some at one point in time find how you can actually key international development. Uh, you know, it, it brings us back to what you highlighted. You said three key things. You said, uh, well, politics, uh, political uh, politics is dead in Lagos. Uh, you also talk about the economy. Uh, and that is why people are definitely, questions have started coming in. But again, let me quickly, uh, for those uh, listening, uh, don't forget this program will be up on our YouTube uh, channel after the show. Uh, that is why we're doing it via Zoom. So you get to watch uh, the program uh, pretty much later on our YouTube channel. Uh, for those uh, listening across the world, you can also send your messages uh, via WhatsApp. If you are sending it uh, from outside Nigeria, don't forget to put in the country code. It's uh, and of course uh, you can. All, it's o nine o nine two one seven two nine seven three plus two three four for the country code. If you're sending from outside Nigeria, and of course uh, if you're on Twitter, you can also send us a message on Classic FM nine seven three. Uh, that's the Twitter handle we're using uh, to uh, pull all of this together so that. Uh, uh, Fuad Oki, who's our guest today, can answer some of your questions. Uh, one of the questions we have here is that if you say politics is dead, and uh, this old person, uh, Ridwan, said uh, he's uh, also been able to go through this uh, document uh, you released. Uh, he's asking, what's the state of local government elections in Lagos at the moment? Well, 
uh, it has become a win-win. Before the 17th of April, the will to conduct local government as a 20D was not there. And all I did with the nine-page document then was to draw attention of the, the independent electoral commission that you had better do the right thing. Else again, I'll drag you guys to court. And uh, in 72 hours, they came out saying, okay, we will do the election as a 20, uh, 48 hours thereafter, they came with the notice of election and everything. So they are doing their bits, but we must also, all of us must also keep an eye on what they do. Time passed, they give leverage to one or two parties at the expense of the people. And this time, these are things that are contained in the, in the, in the 17 page documents that is asking them to come out clearly and truthfully in ensuring that the right thing is done. Now, we must now go back to the political parties, including my party, that is even the party in government. All of us must ensure that our political parties respect their own laws, that our parties respect their constitution. We must hold all the political parties responsible for internal democracy. We must look, Lagos has been under enforcers, I call them political enforcers, under feudal lords. I alluded to the issue of George Floyd in Minnesota and Officer Derek Chauvin. Lagos is under siege politically and it's affecting Nigeria. So let us free Lagos by all placing our hands on the deck, raising questions and challenging political parties. Number one, to ensure that they respect the rule of law, to ensure that internal democracy exists in their local government. Part of it is what may likely happen. Disenfranchise poor and most capable hands by raising the bar of what will be paid as nomination fees. It's a strategy. If any political party come out to do that, we must all resist them. So the solution to local government election and a viable one, a credible one and free at that, all of us must look at what the political parties are doing. On the days of their primary, I am putting machineries in motion where we will run throughout the day. On the social media, if we can muscle enough fund on television, to monitor what they do. They must do that which is right. And that's the way to do it. You know, you know, it's amazing because, uh, you know, what we're seeing for the first time uh, are things we read in textbooks, you know, uh, whereby you have people who put pressure within their political parties, uh, just the way you, you're doing at the moment. But uh, once uh, from 1999, things changed uh, politically in Nigeria to the extent that uh, what you're doing now uh, for those who, who haven't actually gone into uh, history books, they, 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 they've been made to believe that it is anti-party. Uh, it would seem to see as if uh, Fuad Oki is pushing against uh, some of the uh, policies or the winning uh, machinery of, the of his own political party. Well, you know, for me, this is like the up-ten time. You know, Suleiman, you know that I have been dismissed and dismissed and dismissed from political parties. But you know one thing very clearly? They cannot stop me. You know why? I have that in abundance, which they will need, even if it is a day in four years. To God be the glory today, back to back four times, I have midwife for my party 
elections in Lagos State, in addition to other states that I call satellite states. And I've never stopped insisting and demanding that we must do the right thing. You are very correct. Since 1999 to date, unfortunately, we, we, we have not gotten it right. We've not gotten political parties. We don't have parties with clear ideology. We have same of strength. And that's why you see people in the morning be in party A and in the afternoon go to party B and in the evening again come back to party A. You know where? Because nobody is holding them responsible. And it is also because between 1999 and 2021, we've also lost our value system. We have allowed novel rich and people with questionable characters and credentials to take over our lives. And it must change. And that's all I'm saying. Because uh, it's, it's really important, uh, you know, I, I should be asking questions, uh, good a thing you live in Lagos. I, I don't know how well your local government is doing in Lagos, uh, because for some Lagosians, uh, uh, irrespective of uh, their education, they still don't have the faintest idea of what their local government is about, let alone who the chairman or, or the administrator is. Uh, as the election, you know, as, as we look towards having local government election in Lagos State, what are those key things that people should look at uh, to change in the course of things uh, or change in the narrative? But I'll first let you let us in on how the local government operates in your uh, locality so that we see if it's a, it has a semblance of what every other Lagosian is experiencing. I, I, I am yet to clearly give any local government in Lagos the last four years a pass mark. In the last four years, none has yes. the pass mark? Particularly in the last four years. I am yet, I, I am not convinced. I have not seen. And it was recall that I was also, you know, an operative of local government administration between 91 and 93. So I am in a position to say, this local government has not done badly. That local government has, has done well. I, I cannot. There's no local government that I will give pass mark today. But I refuse to blame them again. And you know why? Because we've been lackadaisical in our attitude to how we are governed. We, we don't ask questions. We do not participate in selecting who to give our franchise to. And these are the things we must go back to. Let us leave what has gone and be guided by it and face a clean sheet with a view to getting the type of governance that we deserve. Let us desire a system that will work, not can work, that will work, that will work. Let all of us begin to, to, to interrogate well, exactly what we want in your local government. What do you want? Look for like-minded individuals, begin to come together. But you know the danger, which we must all put at the back of our mind. Don't give your franchise to a job seeker. The moment you do that, you've lost it. Uh, he, he graduated from the university seven years ago, and he doesn't have a job. So he's been looking for a job. But he goes all over the community. He's been helpful. He's, this is that. That should not be the prerequisite. Let me shock you today. The take home of the counselor. It's in the region of 400 and something thousand total emoluments. And most of these young men and uh, girls, most of them never had or earned 30,000 minimum wage before them. 
and you're asking them to make laws for the good governance of your community. Hapa, Suleiman, are you well? What experience of life, what understanding of social needs, what economic, because you, 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 you don't govern without having policy that is looking at those that will be affected and impacted. So when you now have a job seeker, you know, a green horn, you are now giving franchise, your franchise too. Then you cannot talk. And that is what is happening. And together we must change that. That's the panacea. Well, um, I have this from Adedeji. He says, there's so much historical events and memories well said about Lagos State by uh, al Haja Fuad Oki. Well said, but the lack of good governance uh, uh, lack of infrastructure and turning over of historical monuments into private ownership should be blamed on his generation. He's talking about your generation. I mean, his age group brackets uh, can't deny this fact. The picture and the destruction of Lagos City today wasn't what is what the master plan of the elders of Lagos State uh, wanted. Uh, I'll just allow me to take about three of them so that you can just uh, react. Uh, this other one here says, uh, good afternoon, uh, Suleiman, and uh, well, permit me to be anonymous. I'm from Badagri. We are suffering from bad road from Ikoga to... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, and also he's also talking about blackout uh, and our community leaders are not effective. It goes back again to what you just highlighted. Local government administration, irrespective of what pain they're going through, no one is saying anything. And uh, this is from Abu. Uh, Abu says, uh, politics is like religion, both uh, not bad or dirty, but the practitioners are the ones who employ debt into that practice. And the last one I'll take, uh, making it four. Uh, so, sir, our political ground is so dirty that it's a bit difficult for the positive minds to get involved. Uh, this is from Emmanuel in Iju. So I'm sure Emmanuel is reacting to your call for more people to get into politics. And he's saying that uh, positive minds is so difficult for positive minds to get into it. Maybe we can start uh, uh, by your reaction uh, to Abu's question before we get okay. into it. Okay, let me take Adedegi first. Okay, then. For the, for, for the purpose of this discussion, I will agree with him that our generation has failed. Unfortunately, it doesn't know my age. But let me agree <laughs> with him that our generation has failed. I am now challenging his generation, the Sorosoke generation, not to feel or get daunted by events of September 2020. But rather, that they should be get and um, they, they should they should be bold enough. You see, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has amended is very clear. The clarity is this: you will not be able to actively contribute into governance if you are not sponsored by a political party. Now, all the parties are same of same as we speak no ideological base. But the good thing is this, in order to change it, you must change it from within. And that is why during the registration and revalidation exercise of the All Progressive Congress, my party, I was all over Lagos, all going to local governments, holding advocacy and engagement, begging the Sorosoke generation to take advantage of that membership registration and populate the party. When you populate it, you have the number to make the difference. You have, again, our, you know, our, our lost and wasted generation, like-minded individual, who will be there for you, who will stand behind you, get you back. No shaking. And that is what we must start doing. The local government election is offering another opportunity to your generation to go out there, use your number to speak out. And that's the way to go. My brother from Badagri, you must know very well that Badagri is so strategic. 
in all facets of life. And any government that refused to do the needful in that absence will come back to regret its, its lack of ability or capacity to do the needful. Don't worry. We are in 2021, before January 2022. You will see them come back. All of them, be it the federal or the state. The Ikoga Zebe Road, which you talk about, unfortunately, it's a very strategic road because it is also an agreed belt that link Lagos through Ikoga, by the Agri Expressway, Zebe Zakete, on the other end, going to Diroko. So I, I, I know it. And don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, we've endured so much. And endured, you know, M -M 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 should not be too much. But I can tell you, don't beg anybody. They will come running before this time next year. I assure you, my brother, Emmanuel, go out there. Talk to your generation. Get people at your, at, your, at your community level. And I'll tell you those who actually participate and who helped us to get to this sinking debt that we have. Women. So go out there, talk to them. They are the one involved. They are the one voting. Those I be like, by by are like me. You don't vote. Too. All we do is to tell you, yeah, we have given you this nothing. So go and deliver him. Deliver yourself. You make the difference. Quite an instructive one because uh, it, it does seem as if things are changing. Uh, I, I know we'll get into the 2023 discuss, uh, before, discussion before we leave, but uh, uh, this one here uh, is saying uh, from Abulegba Osa. Uh, apologies, I tuned in late. Well, don't you worry. Uh, you can catch up uh, the the miss part on uh, on our YouTube. And he wants to know uh, your name. Uh, he's uh, Fuad Oki, and also wants to know uh, him on all social media handles because I love what he's saying. I want to follow him. He wants to know your social media handle, perhaps maybe on Twitter, so that he can follow you. Uh, he said he likes the way you have uh, talked about us being led by imbeciles. Uh, and of course, uh, he said, permit me to include that these uh, uh, imbecilic laws, uh, his words, don't cut across board or don't affect uh, some people who make the laws. Until laws cut across board and quota system is discarded and destroyed, there can't be any progress. We attach too much sentiments and religion to everything. Um, I think the bit he got from you, he's just reacting to that. Um, uh, it's good a thing, honestly. Uh, I like the fact that I, I was struggling to see what uh, the man wrote in Badagri and you were able to complete that sentence for me by knowing that road. And for me, that is what governance is about. I'm one of those, uh, while I was still very much uh, on, you know, China's television with my colleagues uh, during that uh, debate uh, that had uh, uh, the governor then, Fashola, it was a fantastic debate. I think it's still one of the best governorship debates ever held by any state uh, because off the top of his head, I still can remember Fashola giving names of what you would call in a, a colloquial term, Lungu, Koro, Kona, small, small areas that ordinarily people shouldn't know. So yes, <laughs> so it tells you that that's a man who is on ground and he knows his uh, community. Just the way you've been able to understand that particular road in Badagri. So how do we get people now? I'm helping Emmanuel to stretch this now. How do we get people as we move towards uh, this local government election so that even those listening outside Lagos uh, can say, okay, this is the way we can uh, understand that Mr. A or Madam B is the best person, best suited for this job of a local government administration. Because now we have people who are strangers who don't understand their locality, they don't live there. My own locality in Lagos, those who represent us, they don't even live there. They live far away from the people in places where you <laughs> life is better for them. So hey. how, can we, how can we have people who live in such places uh, come on the saddle? One of the things I'm trying to do, and in the next uh, one week, it's again to 
come out with a link uh, under the ages of the right to choose movements, R2C movements. And uh, what we'll be doing is issuing out you know, um, uh, information and guidelines for people who does not know their neighborhood, who does not know the political world or constituency they fall into, to help them and encourage them to populate any party. Populate any party, have the number, use it. Now, what am I trying to say? Today, as we speak, our people, those who will even vote, already have accepted the faith accompli. That why do I want to? Eh, I should grow you, so I don't need to. No. This time around, we do not allow it. No, 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 no. We will not allow it. But it will only happen if the Suleiman of this world will come together and take a decision. We should have chief executive officers of multinational companies, directors, CFOs, and whatnot, taking leave of absence for two years, three years, four years to participate. You know why? If you guys refuse to do it, you started paying for it and you are going to pay for it more dearly. More dearly. All of us must come out, speak up, participate. And that's the way to go. Talking about all of us, uh, this one here from Oshoke says that to encourage more young people come into politics, our laws need to be amended allow civil servants to join political parties and also contest elections. What do you have to say on this? Well, the guy is either ignorant of the extant law or is lazy. That issue has been pronounced and rulings or judgments by the Supreme Court has been made about that. For, for civil servants, to join political parties. But one thing is clear, you cannot eat your cake and have it. If you are a civil servant, you can always ask for a leave of absence, you know, to do just that. But you know what most of them do? They want to be cancelled, but they want to continue to earn salary until after the election, after the exercise. So when they fail, they now say, eh, uh, this so uh, allows to no, no, and you know why a lot of them also want to go into politics because of the because of the the sweet, which they think it's not to serve. No, no, and that's the problem we have. Well, many Nigerians must come out and participate in how we are governed. Politics is community and it's community service. I think, I think you have a point. Sorry to butt in there because you have a point. Uh, you have a point when you say it is a call to serve. And that is why people like yourself, and in, in fact, just recently, uh, this is taking us to 2023 now as we wind down. Uh, recently, we saw smart Adeyemi, a, a you know a senator in the national yes. assembly um for a man to cry in the open concerning insecurity and to think that some were also saying that some people uh that's the gist uh confirmed or unconfirmed the gist is that uh, some people in your party were not too happy with him to the extent that they were asking him ah Oga, are you not in the opposition why would you be talking like this in the open so, 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 but uh, now we're getting to see. Why, why are you afraid to speak? Why are you afraid to, to, to say it the way it is? I'm not afraid. I'm telling you. Are you a wolf? <laughs> <laughs> that means you, you, you know what I don't know. Oh, you know what I know. 
Hey, you, you still have to tell me this. Anyway, anyway, the gist is that, well, he was asked, hey, come on, are you in the opposition? Why are you wailing? Why are you crying? And I said, oh, wait a minute. Uh, now we're getting people like uh, Mr. Oki talking and uh, people are not too excited about it. We, we need more people irrespective of political leanings because when we talk about national issues, uh, that's why you know, on the discourse here, it's a conversation. So uh, I... The, the, the whole thing is, how do we get more people, really, to join? Okay, let me say this without equivocation. I am a voirist. I am a voirist. And I don't care how anyone feels. What Senator Smart Adeyemi did was just speaking my mouth the way it is. Absolutely. If you believe in something and you show commitment to it, you must be able to speak truth to power, which he has done. Those that are attacking him possesses questionable democratic credentials. Events of the next few weeks or months will show exactly who is passionate and who has you know, empathy, not just in his eyes, but also in his heart, in his blood, and in his vein. We will see that. As a worrist, I think the issue is this, Mr. President, Nigeria is not safe. Save us, save this country, number one. Number two, we all have a responsibility and that responsibility is this. We must go back to the basics. Let us go and rekindle our value system where we will all be our brother's keepers. Let us recreate windows of opportunities for teaming Nigerians, especially the young ones. The Bible says that an idle man's business is always the devil's preoccupation. We must not allow a productive generation to get to where they are today. And I believe that is all. And before Senator Smart Adeyemi, recall Senator Ndume, who cannot go back to his village who is also not safe again in Abuja, has always been saying this. So it's not about whether you are in APC or you are in ADP. It's about speaking truth to power, and that's the only way we can help them. I just addressed the governor of Lagos State in my letter, telling him that it should raise up. It's working so hard, but it's not showing. You know why it's not showing? Because his handlers are not engaging Lagosians the way they should. His they are not challenging his handlers. H A N D L E are in capital. Unfortunately, his benefactors and Lagos political enforcers are not allowing him to serve Lagosians and must get himself out of that shackle sit right in the driver's seat, get himself ready, he must stop the insecurity we have in Lagos. You know why? Lagos is Nigeria. When Lagos born, Nigeria will born. I pray to not born under his stewardship. Amen. That's my prayer for you. You know, uh, you said, Suleiman, be bold. You know, are you a fox? And so now I want to ask you that same question now. Who are the political enforcers? Who are the people not making the Lagos state governor, you know? I have refused lately. Really, really, work, really do his job. I have refused lately to mention names again. You know why? I realized that by mentioning names, I am even emboldening them. I am making them issues, and they are non issues. So, but one thing is very clear Lagos' narrative is like that of George Floyd in Minnesota. 
Lagos cannot breathe. Its juggler is being held by people who do not mean well for how, us as how, how, how can Lagosians take off the knees of those uh, of that person or those people, you know? By standing up like Fuad, by engaging in discourse like Suleiman. You must stand up to be counted. You must, you must understand something. When you chicken out, you are not better. You are not. Let us all stand up. Let us demand from our representatives through representation, not representation through second layer approvals. You know, now we're talking about representatives, uh, talking about grassroots governance. Uh, you know, before I go to get to that, how significant has the decision really uh, to collapse factions in Lagos APC been? Well, it is a funny thing. Why is it funny? In law, it says that you cannot put something upon nothing. What you did not create, eh, you cannot dissolve. The Justice Forum as a fraction is known to Nigerian law. It's known to the CAC as a social political group. So how can some someone or some element rise up one day to say you cannot do this, number one? Number two, what drives political parties and indeed political association is what we call tendencies, factions, and carcasses, where you have, you know, you know, robust discussion, robust challenges. So in the case of Lagos, whoever dissolved anything was doing nothing other than academic exercise. I have my tendency within the APC, which nobody, 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 you cannot tell me you stand dissolved. I will ask you, okay, from where to where, which day we start love that we want to begin the peace? Oh my God. Uh, well, the, the, the thing here, the thing here is that I think there's, uh, there's need for us someday uh, to go back you know, away from politics someday, I think we should have a, a conversation and start looking at uh, the life of someone. You know, off the top of my head, I'm thinking if, that, if there's anything in Africa, if I would want to believe in reincarnation, perhaps I'll be thinking that uh, your great grandfather lives in you. Uh, from the bit of history we've heard about, you know, <laughs> what is. Oh, I can look at I can search for his, his, his photo. I can send these photographs when Ilu Committee was constituted. I can send these photographs when Ilu Party was constituted. I can send, his, send you his photograph when he became the Balugu of Lagos. And you see if there's any, you know, semblance. So uh, my question before I ask uh, that of APC uh, factions is uh, listening to all you've said so far and uh, going by, you know, people's comments, uh, a lot of them, we, we haven't been able to read them. And do you think that uh, if truly uh, people go by your uh, advice, some of those, uh, you know, grassroots administrators will return if to office uh, at the end of the day, going through the primaries. If everything works the way uh, you have advised in your letter and on this program, do you see some of these people whom you said, well, in the last four years, uh, haven't actually had any pass mark from you? Do you think that they have the slightest chance of returning? Well, Again, it takes us back to where we started. My preoccupation and determination is in ensuring that Nigerians participate, is in ensuring that the committee side will be responsible. Oh, looks like uh, for the first time we have a glitch on this uh, connection. Uh, uh, I hope uh, we have him back. I hope I haven't actually lost that. I was even surprised. I said, hey, come on, from the very first, uh, you know, minute, we've had uh, a, a swift uh, and... Uh, and responsibility. Uh, 
as a coordinator. So I cannot. Do you know? Say, I lost you. Sorry, I lost you for a bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we lost you for a bit, but again, you're back. So maybe you can just take us uh, through what you were saying. Okay. There. Yes. That my preoccupation is in ensuring that parties obey and respect their own rules and regulations. Particularly my party, the APC, ensure that internal democracy prevails. My engagement with other like mind is in holding down and see that the right things are done. Now, I cannot be in Surulere and be in Etiosa or in Leki. It is for the people of those local governments to look at those that are stepping down now and determine whether they want to give them another opportunity at governance. So I, 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 I told you they have not done well. But then those who will give them opportunity either to return or to say, we've looked at your scorecards, you've not done well, so we will not send you. It's their responsibility. So saying that this will not go back or that will not go back, no, that will be most unfair. Let the people in the various local government and community rise up to come out to say, go ahead or no, we are sorry, we are not giving you an opportunity again. And uh, quickly, uh, let's close uh, with this, and it has to do with uh, the 2023 election. Uh, many Nigerians have started making uh, you know, comments on, about that election, even though it's still far. And they say for politicians, once an election is over, the uh, the start of another one. The next one. So, uh, yes, I'm happy you said you are a Buharist, and I'm happy again that you are a member of the APC. Do you think your party stand a chance with what the uh, what the country is witnessing at the moment in 2023? I, I said this. I said this. I said this on channel televisions with your colleague and brother, Chamberlain, he asked the same question. Oh, and I will answer the same way. That APC, that APC shall win 2023 presidential election. Not because we have done exceedingly well, but because there is no opposition. Wow. That's a, that's that, 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 that's a fine place for us to leave it. But again, uh, I'll, I'll also crave your indulgence after the local government elections. Uh, it would be interesting to have you come back here again. Uh, and again, uh, we'll also share on our Twitter handle, uh, your handle for those uh, who want to follow you. Or you want to let us in on that? You're, are you on Twitter? I am an analog. I am an analog person. I don't use all of those things. I don't know. Whoever wants to reach me with their questions and everything, and please, Slimon, uh, let me indulge in that with you. Okay. That when they reach you, you know how to reach me, and I will avail myself. Thank you very Talking much. Talking about coming back again, Slimon, you know, for you, anytime, any day, I will be. I'm honored, honestly. I'm honored. Thank you very Thank much. much brother. Thank you so much, for having me. And uh, Ramadan Mubarak to you. Ramadan Mubarak, my brother. Thank you. Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you. It's, it's we, we shall witness so many more of it, inshallah. I mean, I mean, it's been a fine moment uh, with uh, Fuad Oki, who is the chieftain of the All Progressives Congress. And that's how it's been here on the discourse here on Classic FM. I'm Suleiman Aled. Many thanks for listening. And don't forget to watch this on our YouTube channel.